from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh my God! Oh, here I go! Oh, and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Happy freaking New Year. Here we are, 2008, and our very first brand spanking new edition of the Tom Likas Show. I just spent almost two weeks in Capos, Costa Rica, which is on the Pacific side of Costa Rica. For those of you who don't know, Costa Rica is in Central America. It is, yes, a country. Do not confuse it with Costa Mesa. Not a country. Big shopping mall and stuff, but not a country. But nonetheless, uh, I rented a seven-bedroom villa in Costa Rica with a view of the Pacific and an infinity pool. And that is where I have been, on a street that is not even a street. The streets have no names in Capos. The houses have no addresses. And when you see an ad in the newspaper for a grocery store or for a department store or whatever, uh, the directions will be 300 meters north of the bus station, it'll say. That'll be the, the location information you get. Or it'll just say downtown Capos. I mean, forget about zip codes. <laughs> this was the rainforest. It was fantastic. I had a great time. Costa Rica was wonderful. And no offense, folks, because I do travel and I've seen uh, many countries. I've spent a lot of time in Latin America. But I've got to say something. Having spent 10 days in Capos, Costa Rica... I don't know what it is. The women in Costa Rica have no breasts. These are the flattest women. Outside of China, these are the flattest women I've ever seen. And you all assume that because they are Hispanic, they have they are bountiful. And these women are not bountiful in the breast department. I don't know what it is. It's a lot of big papayas while I was there, but uh, not much else. I'll tell you that right now. Anyway, it's very good to be back. And uh, while I was away, of course, you know, when you're in the rainforest, you are really out of touch. My villa, as wonderful as it was, zero Internet access. Forget about Wi-Fi or dial-up. There, there was not a landline. So there was no way I could log on, see what was going on. No way I could keep in touch. Cell phone service was horrific where I was, and if you could get it to work, it was $2.49 a minute. So I was on the phone as little as possible. Gary Zabransky, my producer, did not hear from me once this vacation. And I usually will check in with Gary to see what's going on. Nope. Too complicated. <laughs> I mean, uh, this was the jungle, folks. I was in the goddamn jungle. I'm not kidding. I grew up in the South Bronx. This was way more the jungle. Tell you what, it's outrageous. But good to be back. But among the things that happened uh, while I was away, things changed on the radio here in L.A. And nobody informed me about this. I walked back in, and the radio station here in L.A. now has another show. That wasn't there when I left. Now, I've been gone for a while. Now, not only was I gone for... Uh, 10 days to Costa Rica. I took all these days off prior to the Christmas holiday, so I have not done a show in some time, as you can tell from the reruns we've been running. But we are now here in L.A. We are preceded for one hour by Danny Bonaducci doing his own radio program, and Danny is here. Thank Hi. you, Danny. 
I am indeed, buddy. Good to see you. Nice to see you, man. You're looking great. Uh, thank you very much. And I, I hope, um, you know, because people have a tendency to call me a, a, like a suck up because I'll go to a sponsor's party and it's like, dude, that guy just gave me a convertible for free. I'm going to show up at his party and say thanks. Of course. I want you to know that I've referred to this station as the station that uh, Stern built but now lives on Lycus. And here he comes, the big man Lycus. I want you to know. That's not sucking up. I, I I said, I don't care if you like his show. You want to get my attention? Beat him. And until you beat Lycus, don't bother me. And the, the next guy at number two is about four million listeners behind you. So until you beat Lycus, shut up. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome, sir. We are thrilled. I want, first of all, I want to say we are thrilled to have you as our lead. It's you know what? It's it's an absolute thrill to be your lead in. This is, this is the one of the best things that I think has ever happened to me. Really? Yeah. A lot of good things have happened to you. Yeah, a lot of bad things, too. But this is, with one hour, I have a one-hour show that does not exist. They didn't ask me to take a pay cut, which makes me approximately the highest-paid disc jockey in the world by the hour. <laughs> Unfortunately, I only do an hour. But still, it sounds good. Uh, but because within an hour, I don't really have time to screw up, all of a sudden, everybody thinks I'm some kind of comic genius, and my phone won't stop ringing. This worked out great for me. I'm sure it did. Now now you're not getting up in the morning. Now you can come in in the afternoon, and I guess you can do all your other projects before you get to the station. It's great. No, I, I'm actually a morning guy. I prefer the mornings uh, in the sense that I, don't, I, don't, I need very little sleep and can do a lot of stuff afterwards. But the one hour of just Danny, because Jack doesn't want me talking to a lot of people because I have just a little time, I don't have time to suck. And now people are offering me <laughs> jobs up the butt. Everybody, that life coach thing I do that's three minutes long on a download. Now they want to do a full series on it. Um, somebody else wants me to do another reality show. All the producers that are riding around in their cars are going, wow, they created this hour for Danny. He must be great. So through trickery and deceit and smoke and mirrors, it looks like I may end up rich out of this. That, that, you know, the best things that happen are sometimes, I know for me, the best thing that ever happened in my career was when I got fired by KFI 16 years ago. Best thing that ever happened to me. Dude, I got taken out of a, a radio station in Philadelphia in handcuffs. The competition bailed me out and gave me a raise. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, me too. I love radio. Yeah, it, it is fascinating. Now, i got to tell you, when I came back to town, among the things I did, I logged on to the station website just to see, you know, what was on there. And right. What the, you know, because they're always making changes on, on the station website, and I'm always taking a look at that. So I'm, I'm seeing the station lineup on there, and I, I made a few phone calls today, and I'm kind of checking around. Now, i gotta, I got to ask you this question, because I, I, in listening to the station today, maybe this was dealt with last week. I don't know. But I wasn't here, and I, I I work here, so I have to ask you this question. And and I ask this as your biggest fan, big supporter, love you to death. By the way, I absolutely that. know that. I absolutely know that. So I will take that question exactly that way. Okay. Did Adam Carolla throw you under the bus? To be completely frank with you, since you were so honest with me, I really don't know. I found out I would be doing this show probably about eight minutes before you did. I got a call, said, you're doing two to three. We're going to not do the replay of uh, Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. You're going to do your own hour. And when they didn't ask me to take a pay cut, it took me a little bit to think, did I just did, did Adam fire me? Did Jack fire me? Have I been fired? And then when I thought, well, they're giving me the same dough for one hour, they like me. They want me to stay. So I, I don't know. I would say if I had to guess, no matter what he did, he did me a favor. He did write me a letter uh, just the other day that I thought was kind of interesting. It said, um, I, I hope you don't feel I did this, 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 and this. Of course, that probably sounds counterintuitive according to the actions that I have taken. So obviously he did something, but I don't know what it is, and I don't hold grudges. I, I understand, and I'm not saying you should hold a grudge. I'm just saying, and, and you know, you, as much as you talk about yourself, you're not going to say this to the public. I'm going to say it on your behalf. When you came to the station and when you came to the morning show, we added 160,000 listeners out of the shoot. Right. It was huge. And it was great for the station all day long, including us. And I've got to tell you, we went back to being number one in men for the first time since Howard Stern left. And I attribute part of that to you being here and energizing the whole radio station. Thank you, sir. That's that's. There's no doubt about it. So what I'm saying to you is, it makes in my head 
no sense. Yes, it does. You, yes, no, it does. You're no. a smart man. Yes, it does. Why would a man... Now, it's funny because I was going to be all politically correct, but now I'm talking to like us. What yeah, can I do? of course. What sense, what possible reason could a morning show go up 160,000 people and then the person that some people hold responsible for that success be gone. What could be a possible reason? I don't know. Uh, let's face facts. Stranger things have been done in radio management. Somebody put David Lee Roth on the air. Well, that was that was a terrible mistake. Somebody they, put a man cow on an AM radio station in my, Los Angeles. My guess is one of several. I've heard, so I'll give him this compliment. I, I was in the room when Adam Carolla said, having Danny Bonaduce on the Adam Carolla show is like having two Eddie Van Halen's in the same band. I'm thinking, well, higher rhythm guitarists and have the best band in the world. He's thinking we've got two leads. Maybe we should split them up. Either way, that's kind of a compliment. If you want to look at it the bad way, you could go, well, he got jealous and scared that Danny was taking over, and I don't care. I've got as famous as I ever need to be. I have as not much money as I, you know, I can't live rich forever, but I've got plenty of dough. I didn't care that it was the Adam Carolla show. There's a possibility he did. On the other side of that, there is the chance that he just didn't like the way we work together. And, you know, I, I can't really sometimes I think he did me a big favor. So I, I still like him. I admire him. He does the same kind of things I do. He boxes. He hangs. He's a real guy. I mean, he doesn't go pick up strange chicks and stuff like that like, you know, real men like us do. But um, the only thing I would ever say against Adam Kroll, because I think he's as smart as everybody says he is. I think he's as good as everybody he says he is. But 97.1 Free FM, which is what we are in Los Angeles. I assume we're syndicated now all over the yes. world because you're the goddamn king, and I hate you for it. <laughs> um, the thing is, the fact of the matter is, you want to be responsible for your own success. And if anybody started to make you know make you a little jealous in that regard, you want to show I don't need anybody to do this. I can do this on my own. Uh, it's Tom Likas here, and I'm talking with Danny Bonaducci, who's just begun his own show, two to three p.m. Preceding us here in L.A. on ninety-seven point one KLSX, and we're we're kind of talking about everything that led up to this. Now, again, why I'm asking you these questions? People have said things. Radio and Record said there was some kind of disagreement between you and Adam. Was there a disagreement? No. Now, I'll tell you that flat out. I read that on uh, Perez Hilton. It said fired, then rehired. That is absolutely not true. I got a call from uh, Jack Silver. Said we're moving you from mornings to afternoon, and I. I said, yes, sir. I'm an employee. I don't ask my boss a lot of questions. Oh, I understand that. I understand that. But uh, let's face it. Uh, uh, Adam seemed to have some health issues in December. Uh, w w was he having health issues? What was the deal? All right. If, if I'm going to just give Jack the okay to walk in here and give me like a cutthroat thing to stop, because here's what I have a huge problem with. The problem is I came in on Wednesday and Teresa and the board guy are on the air in a panic. And I said, what's the deal? They said, how the fuck am I? Oh, my God. I said, everybody sit down. We're going to do a radio show here. This ain't brain surgery. But if you make this look difficult, I'm going home. It will make me look bad. This is easy. This is what we do because we were born to do it. You go over to Lycus' show and you throw him a curveball and watch how fast he hits it out of the park. This is a curveball and I'm going to hit it out of the park. Plus, you've been whining. You never get to speak. I'm going to ask you how you are and I'm going to wait for your answer. You're going to get everything you want. Just stop panicking. If you make this look like a panic, I'm going home. Secondly, on that same on that same venue, here's here's why I only have a giant problem. Is that night he ended up on the Dr. Drew show. If he was too sick to come to work, and I've I said over and over, Adam Carolla is a man's man. He would crawl through broken glass to get to work. He must be. I, I'll bet he's in a hospital. And when he showed up on Love Lines that night, that freaked me out. Then. We did a live broadcast called a Corolla Christmas, and he couldn't come to a live broadcast with no guests. I mean, this was all me chatting in a nightclub in Santa Ana where his own fans drove 100 miles to see him, and he didn't show. And guess what? He's seen on tape sitting in the audience at the Kimmel Show. Hey, I'll tell you where else I saw him when he was sick. Uh, he was sick, too sick to do his radio program, but I saw him on the Floyd Mayweather flight. There was Adam Carolla sitting in the audience with his name on the Chiron. Well, here's what bothers me. I mean, it. I was blown away. I can beat that. You ready? Yeah. I was the headline comic at that at that casino, and he never stopped by and said hi. Really? Yeah. So I, I, I don't know, because he's always, and I'm, I want to get this straight, he's never been anything but a gentleman to me. These are conjecture. These are 
kind of negative conjecture on my part because nobody's asked me like flat out and I don't know the answers. I cannot tell you that he did something to me. All I can tell you is a two to three shift does not exist. Somebody made it up, which means something went wrong. You know, no matter how you make how you look at it, something has gone awry. Well, that, the, that's why I smelled a rat when I came back. It's like, what's this? Well, here's the way I look at it, like this, and tell me if you agree. I think a radio station is something like a gang. I can see Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. Okay, Heidi's a hot chick that digs chicks. Okay, love her. Love her. We all love that. Yeah. Frank's handsome and funny. Frosty's hysterical. I do what I do. Then you just do what I live to do and wish I could only do. I would strut down the street with you guys so badass and take over some poor small town like Brando in the Wild Bunch or whatever it was. And we just take over the town. I don't see that. I don't see that he wants to be one of the gang. Would you agree with that? Well, uh, all I'm going to say about this, because uh, keep in mind, I, I, I have my own little place here at the movie studio where right. I work. So I'm not always at the station. So I really don't know how Adam and I would get along if we saw each other all the time. And even though, and even then, I work in the afternoon, he works in the morning. All I will say is this. My experience, and I'm being honest here, is that he hasn't really participated much in what is going on the rest of the day on the radio station. Well, I uh, I agree with you. And and nothing is out of it. it. He's shy and I'm not. Last year, he did seven station appearances, and I went through my calendar. I did 116. Wow. I didn't sleep for a year. (laughs) I'm not kidding. I worked 100-hour weeks for a year. And you did mornings. I did mornings, and sometimes I, I did uh, on a three appearances in a, a day. I'd do a lunch with listeners at some restaurant, a happy hour, and then a thing at 11 o'clock at night in the same day. I work for a living. I'm part, I, work for, I work for CBS, and the, the funny part comes easy to me. I make my money when I make the station money, and I don't feel that that comes from every area in this building. I think people think that they deserve things because they're special. I deserve things because I work hard. Well, um, you know, what I always say, I'm, rather than saying this about any particular individual, let's Fair just enough. say this generally about people in the broadcasting business. Uh, there are some people who uh, go and put points on the board all the time. There are other people who make demands and act as divas and prima donnas and have 600 handlers around them, but have never put any points on the board. I'm right. just speaking generally. Generally speaking, I agree with you. And uh, I call and these people. And in case you care, I don't have a publicist, a manager, uh, any of those people. I don't have. I don't have any crew at all. I got no people. <laughs> no I got to be no people. Come on. I, I got to be no people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a publicist. I have an agent. But but the thing is, if you want to talk to me. If you want to deal with me directly, everybody at the radio station knows how to reach me. Right. And everybody at CBS knows how to reach me. And uh, I am available to have a conversation. And I would never throw somebody under the bus. I just can't see why anybody would do that. Because what if the bus, if you believe, and now I'm speaking generally, what if you believe because of this new edition doing a fairly good job, the bus is actually coming for you? And if you don't push somebody else under, you're not doing man's first instinct, which is self-preservation. I'm going to leave it on that rhetorical question. We'll take a break and we will come back. It's Tom Likas and Danny Bonaducci and your telephone call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Better to have chicks who live a little bit of distance from you, don't have time to see you. She's got three more years to finish her PhD. So. Then you seem, by the way, you seem so accommodating. Honey, you've got that PhD to study for. You take all the time you need working on that. I understand. Then when you've got all that free time, you bang on the chicks. That's what you do. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yes, TVs and reruns, the late night shows have no writers. Yes, while we never have writers on the Tom Likas show, and who needs them? By the way, I'm sure Danny will appreciate what I'm about to say, and that is, for those of you who don't appreciate radio and how hard we work and how hard our job is, all you need to do is see Conan O'Brien stumbling over trying to fill 60 minutes of airtime. We do that in our sleep. 
Uh, if I can just, I this is what I always say when I blow hard. I say, I do Leno's week every day without a writer. That's right. That's right. And it's such a pleasure to watch these shows late at night. I'll tell you what, uh, John Stewart and Stephen Colbert are coming back tonight. They'll be whistling Dixie, baby. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to find out how good we really are. Amazing. Danny Bonaducci is here in studio, and we are talking about the events that led to him ending up uh, as our lead. In which, by the way, uh, what, whatever that means and however it happened and whoever's responsible, this is great for us. You know what? I, I This is uh, such a big deal to me I, because I said this earlier, uh, you know, in four hours you can start to slow down. In one hour, I'm just really starting to kick ass. And everybody thinks I'm really good, and my phone's ringing, and I'm getting all sorts of job offers. <laughs> and this is no, by the way, no reflection on Frosty, Heidi, and Frank, who who precede Danny now. Love them. Love but them. Now, here's the thing. They've got huge numbers. Huge. Uh, huge numbers, and uh, we get along just great with them, and they come, uh, you know, with their lunch bucket to work every day. And uh, it's not that we were not thrilled to have them, but now we've got live shows all the way through. Right. It was just the, the only difference would be you had a replay of their 10 o'clock hour, and now you have a live show. So that's that's kind of cool. It's good. Yeah. Well, it's all good for us. And it's, it's you know, it's still my honor for me, man. I mean, right now, there was, there was a time when someone called themselves the king of all media. But there is not. I had a contract for much more than I get paid here, and I brought it to Jack Silver to go to work for Sirius. Yeah. And you know why Sirius lost me? They bragged about this. There's no way to keep track of ratings, so we really wouldn't know how you're doing. And I said, nope. I want to know who's beating me so I can kick their ass, and I want to know who I'm beating so I can rub their nose in it. For me, that's half the fun of coming in here. Yeah. Winning. Winning. That's why I said, like us, love them, hate them, I don't care. Beat them, then call me back. There we go. Let's take some calls for Danny Bonaducci at 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's say hello here to Jaime on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, what's happening out there? Not much. Say hi to Danny Bonaducci. Hey, Danny Bonaducci, man. Hey, what, I just what's up, big man? Give you, are you there, Danny? Yeah, I'm right here, buddy. Hey, man, I see you all the time riding your bike down Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. And uh, I'm a starstruck kind of guy, man, and I always yell out your name, and you always stop and say, what's up, man? And I just wanted to think that you're one of the coolest guys. You got an hour show. It's going to turn into four hours. And I don't know what happened with you and Adam. I don't want Actually, to get into To be it. honest with you, I don't either. But I can answer your, or at least make yeah. a comment on why I always stop my bike and pull over and say hi. The reason I always stop my bike, because I live directly across the street from Hollywood and Highland. It can take me an hour to get out my front door. Right. And the reason it is, I look at everybody that wants my autograph or wants to tell me how funny I was this morning or anything like that. I look at them directly as my employer, and I pay them exactly. that respect. And when you yell, hey, Danny, you must know me from somewhere, which means you put <laughs> breakfast on my table this morning, which means I owe you pulling over my bike, getting off, and saying hi to you. That's why That's I do it. That's why I work. I'm down there all the time on Hollywood and Highland. Well, you're the man, and I thank you for listening. I hope you listen to the whole station. Hi, man. Thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Ken on the Tom Like His Show for Danny Bonaducci. Hello. Hey, hey, Father. How are you? Doing okay, sir. Good. I've been out of the country for the last three and a half weeks, and I used to be an avid listener to that other morning show. And I came back, and I and I tried listening to it this morning, and I didn't hear the familiar voice. And then I hear you this afternoon, which I'm used to. Then I hear Danny, and I'm just I'm blown away and confused. I don't. I know you don't know exactly why, Danny. When did this happen? I literally got a phone call. Honest to God. Honest to God. And I would tell you, I'll tell you anything. It's cost me jobs, but it's also made me a great deal of money by the fact that I've got no secrets. And that's why nobody in radio can really fight with me, because they have secrets. I don't. I came in here. I heard the rumors that uh, I had been fired because I was drinking. You know what I did my first day at work? I wore a shirt that said Jack Daniels on it. <laughs> okay? I've heard the rumors. I don't drink until you find me in the bushes drunk, and then I'm busted. OK, I don't, I don't care what not you personally, but I don't care what anybody thinks if I'm on time and don't bump into the furniture and know what I'm talking about. If I do my job, then my life is my life. So I will tell you absolutely anything. So when I say I don't know, it means I don't know. I got a call from my boss that said I've been moved to the afternoon and that was the entire conversation. Wow. OK. I, I remember seeing you last year up here in Portland at the Lotus. It was a great show. Your show breaking Bonducci literally 
changed my life. Tom, your show has changed my life. And, Danny, for all your successes in future, best of luck. And, Tom, keep please keep going on. Ken, thank you so much. Appreciate Dude, you rock. Talk. Thank you. There he goes from Portland, Oregon. <laughs> Very nice. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas Show with Danny Bonaducci. Alicia on the Tom yeah. Likas Show. Hello. Oh, I love that name. Alicia, I think it's really pretty. I love you both so much. And I don't know what happened this morning. I turned on the radio, and there was something very wrong. And then just now I figured out what it was. I haven't been working for a while. I just came back to work. And there's a huge gap, and now I don't want to listen to that show anymore. I didn't want to listen to it when it was just Adam. And then when they added Therese, I was okay. Yeah, Therese is wonderful, by the way. Danny made it much better. And now I'm I'm just going to listen to my AM dorky radio in the morning because, I mean, it's much more entertaining, personally. No, we can't have that. What do we do, Micah? Now we need people to listen all day long. We do. We need people to listen all day long. You know, a can a can a week. That's all we ask. Listen all day. I'm a I'm a hot teacher, so we can't listen in school. Wait, are you a hot teacher, really? Yes, I. My my girlfriend is. I love you. Wait, my girlfriend is a hot teacher, teacher, and I need you to listen carefully to me. This is important. I'm on the Tom Micah show, and I get to say this kind of stuff. (laughs) My girlfriend is a hot teacher. She knows that I got a divorce because the sex was really bad in my marriage. She thinks the best way to keep me rather than just treat me nicely, which is nice, and do womanly things, and I do manly things, and that's great, but we're getting very dangerously close to a threesome. It would be oh, awful cool really? if it was another hot teacher. Too bad I just got married, Danny. I, I oh, you bitch. Why would you, oh, wait, wait, wait. Why would you, let, why would you let that stop you? Come on. <laughs> this is Danny Bonaduce. Yeah, are you out of your mind? It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? By the way, you know what? As long as your husband, nor I, and this is what I say about threesomes, because I think threesomes for the woman, and I like the, I want the woman to go brag about my sexual prowess, so I think for a woman who is not bisexual, a threesome with two guys is better for her, but you have to make sure that you and the other guys stay at least a torso apart. Yeah, no cross swords, no. No, you can high-five at best. And if she's a real good sport, you can balance beers on her back. <laughs> but shy of that, there could be... If your elbow rubs, you're gay. So you've got to be really careful. That's right. I just love you, Can you tell I listen to the Tom Like the Show every day? I love you too, Tom. Alicia. You know what? I'm so bummed, though, because I'm not going to be able to listen to you, Danny, because I'm going to be teaching the little brat. We do podcasts, right? Yeah, there are mm-hmm. podcasts exactly. on the website. You can hear uh, on uh, 971freefm.com. You can hear uh, Danny's show every day uh, by podcast. And uh, hopefully sometimes you get to hear it live. Okay, awesome. You guys are rule. Thank you. Lisa, you know what? Thank you. Even to be ki- And you know what? When I say I'm not afraid to say anything on my mind, I'm also not afraid to say anything where somebody could say, oh, look at him suck up because bite me. I, I just don't care. If I can say F you, I can also say thank you. Do you know what it's like for a guy like me to be included in the sentence with like of I love you guys? That means I'm doing something right, and thank you. Well, you are doing something right. Well, damn right. I'm opening for like I'm right. killing. And we, and we need you to be great every day. For you God's got sake. it, bro. Perfect. It's an hour. It's the Tom Likas Show. Danny Bonaducci is here. More of your telephone calls are coming up. Like us. Like us. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Do you have kids? By design, I do not. You don't? By design. By design? Yes. Exactly. By dictionary. Stupid bitch. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. We are back from vacation. I'm going to come out of the blocks here with Danny Bonaducci. He now has his own show. Here in Los Angeles, he proceeds it from 2 to 3. And uh, it's all Danny. <laughs> it's all Danny, all the... That's out. it? <laughs> Unadulterated? No, I've adulterated a few times. That cost <laughs> me about $4 million. <laughs> it's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Mark on the Tom Likas Show with Danny Bonaducci. Hello. Tom, I'm so happy to be talking with you. I love you to death, man. I love it. It's, you got the best show, man. Thank you. Hey, listen, uh, this is for Danny Bonaducci. Yes, sir. Um... Listen, obviously you're, you know, I don't know you personally, man. You might be the nicest guy in the world, but I I don't understand how it is that you have, that you're being paid to talk on the radio. You you have no entertainment value at all. I I don't understand, you know, I've tried listening to the Adam Carrillo show many many times. I, I can't, I cannot, I can't grip the show. 
because your, your voice is so annoying. I don't understand how it is that you've made it. But let me ask you a question real quick. So the annoyingness of my voice outweighs the interest of what Corolla is saying. Yes, absolutely. I've given wow. it a chance many times. I don't know who's being insulted here. What? Say that one more time. I'm not quite sure who's being insulted. <laughs> The tone of my voice is more important to you than what Adam Carolla says. It's not just your tone. You, it's like, for example, I remember one time you, you said you said something about, uh, I am who I am because of my wife and everything like that, and I, sh- I should pay her more money or something. You were, it was during when you were going through a divorce or something, and you were talking about, I don't know, maybe you were saying something else that had nothing to do with your divorce, but it, it seemed like you were saying, like, yeah, well, I, I owe everything to my wife. I am who I am because of my wife. I'm like... Dude, what are you talking about? It, You know, you are who you are because you made yourself, not because of some woman. Not true. I did not become an adulterer until we became married. How, how is that possible? So I am what I am because of my wife. I, what I'm saying is I was referring to what you said about yourself career-wise as far as... Uh, you know what radio- fascinates me about you, man? That you know exactly what I said. What? How is it possible that I drive you so insane yet you know everything I say? Because I heard you that one time and I was listening to you that one time. That, you one, that, that one day, you've never and listened to Corolla again. Seconds, and then go, well, uh, well okay, I, I don't like this guy. So Corolla lost you that moment, and you've never heard him again. I, I, I barely heard him since I, at that time that you have come on since you're talking about your divorce. I mean, obviously, where I work, I, I have access. Wait, you, you notice, by the way, the, the backpedaling is going on. Yeah. You never listened. Now he barely listened. Pretty soon he only listens half the time. Well, the yeah, back. pretty soon he listens all the time and writes down what I say so he can call up and tell me why he hates me. You at all. I don't understand how it is that they're paying you to be on the radio. Well, that's what do you do for a living. Oh, wait, say that one more time. What do you do for a living? I, I, I don't understand what you're saying. You, well, this might be your problem right here. <laughs> the question is, I'll try it one more time. What do you do for a living? I manage a uh, extraction, a mining and extraction company. Are you good at it? I'm very good. I make great money. Okay. I didn't ask you about your money. I asked you if you were good at it, and you said yes, and I believe you. Yes. Does that mean that the man that hired you did a good job? It, it could be. It could be yes or no. Well, if you're good at your job, you're doing well. The man that hired you did a good thing, right? He hired a great employee. Sure. Okay. I've got a boss who hired me. He's probably good at his job. You yeah, can't please them all, bro. That whoever some entertainment mogul hires, does that mean that they're making the right choice, the right decision? Let me let me step in here because uh, Danny will not, uh, as much as, again, as I say, Danny loves to talk about himself, but what he doesn't do is toot his own horn. Uh, this radio station added 160,000 listeners in Los Angeles after Danny came on the air. Uh, that's, that's the job of the program director. What do you do about that, man? How do you do that math? That I lost you, but we gained 160,000 listeners that day. How I mean, do you, obviously, how do you you know, I can't sit here and go, well, the numbers don't matter. Obviously, the numbers, they matter. They're very important. You know, That's why Danny is here. But, you know, all I did was call in to, to make that point that, you know, it, it doesn't take a genius to listen to different radio stations and hear who's good, hear, hear who's not good. Obviously, you guys mentioned some other, uh, you know, some of the other, uh, you know, like Frosty and, you know, the guys before Tom comes on. They've got a great show. A great show. Big fan. Yeah, they got a great show. Obviously, you know, I love Tom's show. He's got a great show. There's a lot of other people that have good shows. Some people have shows that you listen to them, you give them a half an hour, you know, here and there, and you just, I, I, this just doesn't hold. Can I, can I tell you something that I hope will, will make us friends in at least a way, at least with something in common? You like Corolla? I, I, yeah, I don't just, mind. Uh, just for brevity, just a yes or no if you don't mind. I'm not being rude. I just really need, this is not my show. Do you like Corolla? Yes. Do you like Heidi, Frosty, and Frank? Do you like like us? Yes. Do you hate me? Yes. We're one hundred percent in sync. I like all those other guys and hate me too. <laughs> I see a doctor every day about my self loathing. So you and I are in complete one hundred percent agreement. How do you live with that, dude? You agree with me on everything. These guys are great and I suck. Now what do you do? Thank you, Mark. Omar, you're on the Tom Likas Show. We're here with Danny Bonaducci. Hey, what's up, Tom? What's up, Danny? What's up, buddy? Hey, um, it's a great honor to talk to both of you guys. But it is anyway, indeed. I want, this question is for Danny. Uh, Teresa said on her station that first day when you didn't appear on that show, she said that she talked to you and that you told her, I thought we were friends. What did you mean by that? 
uh, what I, I wasn't probably talking about, Teresa, we are friends. I talk to her all the time. Uh, I may have meant Adam. I may have meant Jack. I don't know why I'm here. I know that this isn't real. There's no such thing as a one-hour shift for this much money. Something's gone awry. So I don't know who I was referring to when I said I thought we were friends, but I do know that this isn't normal. It sounds great, but it's not right. A mistake has been made, and I don't know who's going to end up paying for it. Well, sorry to interrupt, Danny, but uh, right when Teresa said that, I don't know if you could get the clip, but it sounds like Adam laughed or smirked about it. I completely, I wanted to sock that freaking bastard right through the radio because I thought that wasn't cool at all. You know what? But, uh, I appreciate that, but I said this on uh, the Dan Adam- Abrams show the other night when Chuck Norris threatened to choke out all of uh, uh, anybody that didn't like Huckabee. So I went on and said, okay, that's it. I'm endorsing Hillary Clinton. I don't care anything about her. I just want to fight Chuck Norris. Um, <laughs> so, But I have never, ever threatened to punch a guy in the face and then not followed through with it. And I am not coming into CBS and punching Corolla in the nose. I'll lose my job. I like my job. I feed my family here. So I'm not, I'm not going to do anything at all but my best possible job to entertain you. And as the boss will tell you, I'll be in your city broadcasting from your town, drinking in your bars as fast as they'll let me. I'll be in cars. I'll be everywhere all the time because this is all that matters to me. I have, this is going to sound so BS to you. I have a family. You're it. Everything else comes second. Sorry. That's how I, I was in the gutter, dude, and I found a radio, and it pulled me out. It's Danny Bonaducci on the Tom Likas Show. Dee Dee, hello. Hello. Hi, Dee Dee. Hi. First, I wanted to thank you, Tom, for uh, having Danny on, because I, too, turned on the radio after the holidays and went, whoa, where's Danny? This is totally different than what I expected, and I'm glad to hear somewhat of an explanation. Two, um, an hour isn't really enough for Danny, but I'm glad I'm glad to hear him for the hour. It's kind of an odd hour of the day, hard to be by the radio. For no, that's what I was saying. This hour. shift does not exist. Something crazy happened. Yeah, it's not not the best slot, but at least you got one. And my third thing I wanted to say was, if you're offering your convertible to Amy, what do you offer the uh, girl that steps in to be the uh, third playmate of this little threesome you're trying to uh, put together. Well, honestly, because I'm not BS to anybody. I tell the truth all the time. Uh, It'll probably be a professional she charges. Uh, My guess would be, I'm going to guess if they go by, like, because if they come over and you just get to do it once, doing it with two girls, this whole thing's going to last 30 seconds, and it'll be the most expensive 30 seconds of my life. But if you can oh, buy a block no, of time, you do it a professional. You, that, that won't be fun. My girlfriend do does. My, my girlfriend wants to do it with somebody who does it. If she will do it, she wants to do it with somebody who does it for a living so she's not embarrassed and we go and we pick up a girl. And Danny, you're so devoted, by the way, to his job. It's going to be the 97th caller at 520 <laughs> Dude, And it's sponsored by Sit and Sleep. You're just killing so you, me, Larry. Just so you know, I, I, you're killing me, Larry. You're totally right, Tom. And by the way, let me repeat one thing this said. Uh, this young lady said. She said, I want to thank you for having Danny Bonaduce on your show. And if I haven't said that enough, I'd like to say it again. Thank you. Um, well, just I so you know, I married um, Caller 8 once. <laughs> Good luck with it. I hope I hope you get it. You deserve it. And uh, as long as you put rules and regulations down that your that your girl set, it should be fine. I no, she's in it. charge. She's doing me the favor. I this is what this is what I want. Your relationship. I hope not to, because I've heard these threesomes usually go badly. That somebody ends up hating the other guy. I have set the parameters. Here's the first thing that we were told because she, we, I hosted the erotic exotic ball. That's where that Perez Hilton guy found the picture of me naked. Right. And we met this girl who was a pro, and she said the first time you do it, you should not let the man have sex with the other girl. Do all yeah, sorts of other agree stuff. With that. Um, but a lot of I want to work up to the sex though. I really want to work up to the sex with more than one person at a time. Yeah, you got to ramp up for this, kind of like the Olympics. Yeah. I'm, actually, I'm in Lycus training. <laughs> I'm in Lycus 101 right now, dude, and I have headphones on, so I'm hearing stuff even you don't hear in your car. I'm getting it. I got it. Danny Bonaducci, you hear him every day, 2 to 3 here in Los Angeles on 97.1 KLSX. We're glad to have you. You're a gentleman, a scholar. It's the Tom Lycus Show.